Right. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I'd like to thank the organisers for giving me the opportunity to, to come here today to present the case from really from a train operating company point of view, which basically is a, one of the victims of, of this crime. Um, let's move on a bit first of all. Who am I? I've been around uh, railway trains for 40 years, not primarily involved in removing graffiti. That's not my prime task. My prime task is fixing the trains and making them reliable so they're there every day for the people to use. But it's certainly been a, a side event with the growth of graffiti over recent years. So I've been more and more involved in graffiti removal. OK, first of all, I mean, I was, it was very interesting to hear uh, the previous, not the previous gentleman on the stage, but Ben's presentation is, is our presentation on his view of the, the, the crime or not crime of graffiti and the people who do it. Clearly, uh, I've just done a definition of the two, of artists and vandalism. And what I'm dealing with is clearly vandalism on railway trains and the cost of vandalism on railway trains, not artists by definition. An example, easy to repair. I mean, it was mentioned by Ben that this stuff is easy to repair. I heard by the gentleman earlier that we have protective films on trains. This is a, a myth. It's not on all trains. So on the trains that run in London, the brightly coloured ones with orange and white and blue trains, they have not got protective film on the paintwork. They are painted with an economically friendly paint, which, is, which we have to paint trains in nowadays, so it's less hardy. The paint is, in fact, a two-pack two -pack water-based paint with a polyurethane second coat, which is the same as on your cars. Certainly, the windows have got a protective film on to prevent window etching, etching the glass, because an example, just an example, and I'll get further in detail about costs. If a door, one of those orange doors are etched on a window pane on one of the London trains, the cost of that door is £4,000 to us as a train company. And I know you say that seems unbelievable. It's £4,000. Because we are a, a train company that has a contract with TfL to fix these trains under, under an obligation. And I'd like to sort of pause to give an example, really. I'd, and this will ring true to you more than, if, than trains and damage. I mean, I hired a car in France, a little Volkswagen Golf, and when I took it back, it had a real minor scratch. I mean, like a, a zip scratch on the driver's side door. And because they had my credit card details, I said, look, there's a little scratch on the door on the, on the driver's side. The, the person came out from the French office and said, oh, it's nothing, don't worry about it. When I got the bill, it's 350 euros for that scratch. Now, that's, that's in reality, when you hire a car and you give the car back, you've got any damage on that car, you'll find out how much damage costs to repair. And that's very similar to the trains. With the trains, as a train operating company, we actually lease the trains from a train owner company, a Roscoe they're called. And we're obliged to maintain those trains and keep those trains in the condition that we rent them in. So they're on hire to us. So when either we do the damage now, or when we go to hand those trains back, they discount whatever we owe by the damage. They evaluate the damage on that train. Additional costs to that, I mean, I'll, I'll go a bit more in detail in that. I know I've got a 15-minute slot and I could talk for hours on how much damage we get on trains, but it will give you a, a, an insight into what this, co this actually does cost. We have initial removal prices. Now, the London Train Operating Company is actually bound by a contract. It's a contract till 2022 to remove graffiti under a guideline from TfL within 24 hours. So we have to get it off. If we do not get it off, we have to pay £500 a day for every single daub of graffiti on the train. What for a single window of etch, so even if it's the film, if it's, if it's a panel etch, it's £100 a day. And we pay those if we don't get it off. The reason you see that the London trains, I would say, reasonable for their condition is because we're paying a lot of money to get it removed, so we don't incur the fines that are, that are posed on, on, on us by contract. So for removing the graffiti, we don't, as a train operating company, remove the graffiti. That is bound by this contract that we're tied into. And the cost for removing exterior paint graffiti from a train is £150 per square metre. Now, you may gasp and say, and I'm certainly, what Ben said earlier about the price of a can of paint, I know how much a can of paint costs. And it's an exorbitant cost that we are bound to by contract. I'd like it to be £5 a metre, but it's not. It's £150 a metre. Now, further on in this, I'll, sh I'll show you what happens after. So, the initial cost is managing it, having a train out of service. It was interesting to hear, as a train operating company, we have a certain amount of trains available for the, for the London lines, which are very, very intense. And to get those trains out, we only have one spare train every day. Uh, we're, we're down to actually zero. This morning, I phoned in, we've got zero on the East London line, North London, so we've got no spare trains. 
because the trains that would have been spare are being converted to be five car trains, which we're spending money on, to make it more comfortable for the public to travel on when they're packed as four cars. So we can't afford to have a train out of service and we can't afford to leave the graffiti on because of the expensive fines we pay. So we're stuck paying £150 a metre to get it off. Uh, there's an overview of our current costs. Don't forget, this is a small railway company I'm representing now. I used to be in a bigger railway company. I've been in bigger ones with bigger numbers. We only have 57 trains and another eight trains on what is the Gospel Oak Line. So we've only got 60-odd trains. And this is the cost that we're incurring through the damage on these trains. If you have a bigger fleet of trains, like the eastern side or central side, you can see that it's proportionate. It's big money. Uh, the 8K is just on managing the task and a million pound on secondary costs. I'll just go back to a picture, actually. It'll prompt a bit of... Right, this is a unit that was graffiti damaged, just tagging, like we're, we're talking about, as it being of no consequence. The initial removal process... The paint is so thin on these paint on these trains because we're not allowed to paint to environmentally paint them thicker. They're painted with about, for the technically minded, about 250 microns of paint, and one graffiti removal can take 100 microns out of that paint just by purely removing the graffiti and buffing it up again, so it defends against dirt. Now you remove graffiti from the same car three times, you've lost the paint. And this uh, this unit, unfortunately, I don't think it was targeted to be that, but it it had been hit more than once and lost its paint. And to repair that one car, one side of one coach, was £3,000. So we'd already incurred £2,000 removing the graffiti a few months before. We then deferred doing the, the repair work to the paint, which we're obliged to do, because if we don't do it now, we'll pay it later, and inflate, inflate your costs when we hand the unit back at the end of our concession, which for this company is only about 18 months, and all that costs to get rounded up. So it's expensive. And if we have a unit not available for service because we've held it out to do this job, that incurs a penalty as well. So you can slowly see that the profit that are in, in, in a railway company for a small operator, not government for a small operator, slowly gets eroded away and puts pressure on everything. It puts pressure on me recruiting staff, it puts pressure on... It, it takes money away from where I can use the money more useful in making the trains nicer. Fast forward. Customer expectation, yeah, it is a bit of an unknown fact. How do you put a price on And I understand what, what the uh, guys that have carried out this, at what effect does having a dirty train have on... I really am not a scientist on knowing the effect on the customer. But I know customers on the whole I speak to like a nice environment of anything. They like the toilets in this building. They stink. The toilets in this building smell. If I was in charge of toilets, I'd clean them up and make them smell nicer. It may not be an issue, but for me, it's, it affects me. I'm a customer of those toilets. Fix it. When I'm on the trains, if they've got graffiti, someone's going to come to me and say, I don't like my train graffiti, fix it. Unfortunately, I'm bound not by, this, by whether I think it should be or not be, by a contract that says I have to. And if I don't do it now, I'll have to do it later. In fact, on South Eastern, when the, that was the first company that was carved up as a private enterprise that went out to a, a French company called Connex that have long gone now because it was just too expensive. Part of the damage for Connex's finances were they were declaring right or wrong about £5 million per annum profit. Like any new company starting out, profit margins were low. Like revenue was high, profit margin low. When they handed the trains back naively, they adopted all the damage that the trains had on graffiti and graffiti and removal. It's eight million pound, real money. So before they all got on the boat and went, eight million pound. Fortunately, they was in that business for more than one year. But if it was one year, one year hand back, they'd lost three million pound in a year through purely train damage. It's it's big money. That's the end of my presentation.